Ladies and gentlemen, sorry about that. All good, ladies and gentlemen. He's back. I legit had to drive down to the Starbucks to grab the Wi Fi. Oh, it's all good. Jordan Blake of his college drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. What up, dude? It it has been a wild ride since the last time we talked, and I imagine it's been a really and wild week for you. First off, how are you, sir? And uh, how has the last 48 to 72 hours been for you? Dude, it's been crazy. My phone usually never goes off. I get maybe one or two text messages a day. And my inboxes have been like at 100 plus. Like my messages, when I turn the phone back on, it just goes off for like 10 minutes straight. Just non-stop. Which is, it, which is an amazing feeling. I know I've been biting my tongue, not saying shit about the band for, God, probably since we met. Yeah, you've been, you've been, you hinted a couple times in small little ways that something could possibly happen. But when was the first time you, you realized, hey, this is actually going to happen. The boys are all getting back together. It's the, it's the OG lineup. Let's do this. Probably last weekend, honestly. <laughs> uh, I flew out to California, and uh, everybody was there. We rehearsed the whole EP, and uh, which went surprisingly really good. I was, you know, kind of shaken in my boots. I've always been kind of intimidated by my boys, especially playing for them and stuff. And no one's seen me in years, at least five years. So uh, I don't know. I was just like, well, we're either going to kill it or we're going to get, you know, it's going to suck really bad. And we're not going to have to tell anybody this even we even attempted it. <laughs> did you did you get the the So What <laughs> Festival booking like right away or how how fast was that after? this past weekend when you when you hung out with everybody um we had gotten the offer we've been getting an extreme amount of offers just because it's the 15 year anniversary i think it just makes puts us kind of on a radar to see if like oh i wonder if they can get back together and play some shows with the original lineup and that's i think how nick was um you know they hit him up and asked uh, if he was still, if he could get round up all the boys and do the OG thing. And uh, we didn't know if we were going to be able to do it, work it into schedules and stuff like that. You know, there's a couple babies in the band. Uh, the boys got babies and they got full time jobs. So we didn't know. Uh, apparently, a lot of them didn't stay in contact either over, you know, the last couple of years. And so it was the first time we had all been in the same room in over a decade. Wow. I imagine it was a pretty pretty amazing feeling. Has there been has there been any discussions of hey, if these shows go well and uh we're killing we're killing, you know, covering the old EP, possibly doing a She Watched the Sky part 2 or jamming some new material down the road? Is there any talks of new music? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of like why me and Nick were originally talking was because we wanted to get together and make music just because it had been such a long time and we're both itching to play some shows and neither one of us have a project that's actually going on right now. I have like the emo night thing, but, you know, I'm ready to like perform with the band because I've been singing the two of the songs for the last two years and that's fun mainly because of the crowd. It's actually corny as fuck on stage, like, you know, just kind of like singing along to the tracks. I'm, I feel kind of dorky doing it, but um, I know it, it, it all just depends on how certain people uh, take this, you know, us going out on the limb and, and, and booking shows and 
all that shit. Uh, you know, if it were up to me, then yeah, I mean, I'm already starting to write. If it doesn't end up being She Watched the Sky Part 2, there will still be new music. I mean... It doesn't have to be called that, that, but I'm just no throwing one, that out there. Yeah, that that's what I mean. There will be new music from, uh, from me and Nick, at least. Um, I just... I pray that no one has a problem with us doing this. Um, Why would they? I mean, this this is saving... This is saving my life. Like, this is giving me a purpose. It's helping with my addictions. It's helping with my depression. It's, you know, it's giving me some self-worth. And I, I really hope it doesn't get taken from me. Um, I know I'm kind of speaking out in the air, but I feel like you and I have talked about this on other, in other conversations. I just, I hope everyone could just be cool with it and know that, you know, it's going to help somebody out. It might, might possibly save a life. And yeah. if I could, if I could, you know, I would, I would give it, I've already made commitments to the band and to myself and to my mom who passed away. Like all she wanted me to do was to get back with the boys and play music. Like if I can't oh, yeah. do that for her, like I'm going to be shattered. Well, you're doing so, it, brother. I'm hoping all the, the, I'm hoping everybody's on board uh, on the other side of things. And, you know, you can only hope for the best. I think we're all excited. We were all super excited when we found out the announcement. It seemed like within within a day, thousands of people started to spread the word and the likes came in, the follows, the shares. Everyone's excited to, to see the boys all back together. Um, I don't know if you know this, but we actually are talking to Joey tomorrow. We've never had Joey or Corey on the show, but uh, we, we were able to get Joey. Joey will be on the show tomorrow, about the same time that you're on right now. Um, but man, this this is so this is so awesome. Uh, can we can we jam some of the old stuff right now, just to uh, to throw back? And what is what is your favorite track of "She Watched the Sky" to perform? Like when you were when you were in practice uh, a week or two ago, as you mentioned. What what which one gave you the biggest chills when you were when you were practicing? Um, a new a new experience for me was playing uh, "Reason for Broken Wings." I had never done that before. That was the first time we had jammed it. Um, I think we tried to jam it live, drunk a couple times. Like fuck it, they want more. <laughs> try it. But um, that song, that song was recorded on the last day of recording. Um, time got really close. I hadn't had really the proper amount of time to, to practice it. And Kit Walters, the guy we recorded with, he really pulled some shit out of me that I didn't even know that I had like in there. Like the vocal range on the song is definitely at the top of my range because I mean. I think that it could be, you know, you could sing it, but to have the emotion and actually sound like you wrote it and, like, perform it the way it needs to be, it, it, it had to be, for one, it had to be me. It had to be practiced. And I only did it because they were like, all right, well, let's just try it. Let's see what happens. If, let's get through it. And we got through the whole damn song, and everyone was pretty, pretty bummed we weren't doing it before because I think it's our most popular track. Really, I didn't know that. I would have thought uh, "Nightmare" or "Columbus" would have been would have been the two most popular. But regardless, I, I think we we push those songs a lot more. We never pushed a reason for "Broken Wings" just because it was such a challenging song for me to sing back in the day. Refresher, because you will see this. You is this? Am I correct? You will see the entire EP performed uh, at at the shows that you guys have coming coming soon. Yeah, I think uh, I don't know how long our sets are at the um, at the festivals, but I know the whole EP is only like 17 minutes long. So we're working on getting you know that fit into whatever the time amount that we have. We do plan on playing every song and uh, showing some new stuff as well. Some new stuff, excellent. The last track that you did with with Kit. 
when you when this What's is the that? you said this is the last track that you originally recorded with Kit. Yeah. Are if you had your way, would you go back to him as the producer of of this of some new stuff, or do you have a oh, yeah, another no artist? In, I'm sorry. I said no questions asked. I would do it with Kit over anybody. Hell yeah! Excellent. Hell yeah. Uh, James, I have not given you an opportunity to ask anything to Jordan. Oh, man, it's uh, it's kind of hard to figure it out, you know. Uh, my buddy Luke, you know, is wondering if you ever get uh, mistaken for the redheaded guitarist for sleeping with sirens. <laughs> he says you guys look a lot alike, you know. Um, <laughs> but really, I'm just fucking digging on the whole vibe, man. It's fucking great to to see you getting back and doing the first EP again, and uh, in the future, I'm excited for it, man. Thank you, dude. I'm I'm super excited. It's definitely been waking up feeling different every day since we went and practiced and it kind of became more real it was kind of like a it didn't really hit until we were all in the room looking at each other and it didn't really feel different like it almost seemed like it was yesterday that we were doing it all i mean a lot of bands they they're together because of the talent or because of the connections and what each member has to offer and Skylight Drive was never like that. I mean, don't get me wrong. We fought and we bumped heads and we had hard times, but it, we always apologized. We always came back as one. And I think it shows in the music. Like, we were young when we wrote all of that shit. Uh, some of the first songs, you know, that we had, we had played them. We'd had them for a while. And it took a, you know... It, it seems like it took a while to get get picked up by a label, which was the only real way to get a good recording in 2005, 2006. Right. I mean, we were spending pocket change on local studios and shit and working with the best in the area. But it's still, the when we went and worked with Kit, it was like, for one, he had to put me in my place. He had to he had to say, You got a you got a decent voice, but let let's tune it up. Let's yeah. uh figure out what your strong points are and I think that's emotion. And I agree with that too. I feel like I'm more you know, I'm I'm better at being a storyteller and, and actually showing a side of me that is hard to show more than I oh, am yeah. like a, a trained, talented vocalist. Like everything I wrote I, I just it off the top of my head i didn't really know the keys or anything like that so now that i produce music i see all the different possibilities of things i could have did and knowing the the notes within the keys and all that shit i didn't have any idea and so my voice was all over the fucking place <laughs> <laughs> all over the place and like if you compare them side by side it's it's crazy and it's not because we got into the studio with Kit and he cheated or he auto-tuned my voice or anything like he it was like boot camp dude like it'd be like I think I hit the take he'd be like all right let's hit it again I'd be like that one's good <laughs> let's hit it again but I hit it, I, let's hit it again fucking right. get 10 good takes of each part you recorded probably about a hundred fucking takes per song and that's how I think he built such a dynamic uh harmonies and stuff like those weren't built with a program or anything those were all done with a you know a microphone and we had to take breaks and come back and we knew that you know your screams you want them to be more raw you want to smoke more cigarettes or weed or whatever it was and uh that guy was and he had he's a, a very i guess i won't speak for him i want to say he's an emotional person but he's very understanding as far as what you're going through, like he could find something in his life that's similar, tell you a story. And it's like, you're listening to like pop a kit or something, you know, kind of yeah. like, all right, I'm not the only one that's experienced a heartbreak or I'm not the only person that's lost someone I care about. And so I think that's why the thought the, the emotion shaped. And another thing was the pressure. Like I was scared shitless of letting the dudes down um, not that they made me feel that I like I had to do good. It was just I watched them 
record the songs and give it their all and I just wanted to I wanted to do a good job and we were just at that time starting to reach an audience and get people writing us on MySpace and telling us thank you for the music and whatnot and I think that's always what made me want to write real life shit I guess because I've been trying to in my living situation right now, I've been trying to tell all my roommates, like, music is what you need to go to. Like, it's literally gives you, it doesn't matter what type of music it is or what you're going through. You're going to be able to at least shut off your brain for a minute and just listen yeah. to some, some jams. And I don't think it's just me. I really think music does that for everybody. And I don't know. I've been listening to the EP a lot lately, uh, just trying to see, like, what it is that made it like still relevant 15 years later because it's hard like you listen to the t especially like top 40 or like anyone that gets a number one single the next year they're fucking nobodies right. and we never hit like a big level like that so we didn't have our music being promoted by labels or the band wasn't even promoting the ep after i left so People knowing it is 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 crazy. Like, I feel like it's a well deserved thing to for us to be able to play the songs again. Fuck yeah, dude! Did you ever feel more vulnerable uh, being the singer? You know, because you're talking about emotion and things like that, and how you don't want to let the boys down. But like, you know, when you're an instrumentalist, you you get to hide behind your guitar, your bass, your drums, and all you gotta do is perform mechanically. But then you're up there and you've got to not only do it properly, but also sell the full emotional content. Did that, did that ever drive you a little crazier being that vulnerable? Um, I think the band uh, embraced it. You know, Nick always wanted to know what I was writing about. And when I would tell him what I was writing about, I feel like it would transpire into him. Like it would like the energy or the emotion even if he hadn't gone through it, like he could see on my face, you know, what I was going through. And I feel like he would write, I don't know, it was pretty fucking magical. I mean, for being as un unexperienced as we were, he could read me pretty well. And uh, we wrote the EP pretty fast, um, at least the, uh, the last couple songs, like Nightmare. Uh, reason for broken wings and uh the past the love was like one of the last ones we wrote on our own before kit and uh the past the love was a song i wrote i was actually like a poem i wrote for my grandpa and was gonna speak it at his funeral but got all choked up and couldn't do it and felt really bad about it and i was like you know what? i'm gonna try to make this song so that you know i can honor my grandpa that way because Oh, yeah. His punk ass always pushed me to keep doing things. You know, he last thing he did on his deathbed was sing me one of the most terrible songs I ever wrote, but he still sang it to me. And uh, it was, I don't know, wow. he, I never, I never wanted to stop writing music. He, he kind of pushed me to do it. Same with my grandma, my whole family. I wouldn't have been able to do it if, uh, if they didn't support it, you know, the, we were young. I'd never had a job. I think some of the dudes had tried jobs before, but, you know, if they wouldn't have funded things and let us borrow the Navigator to drive to North Carolina to record the EP, it would have never happened. So, I don't know. I owe my family a lot, and I don't think I'm ever going to have the finances to pay them back for everything they've done for me. So, it's like the least I could do is just write, you know, music. My grandma's ringtone is that song, and I don't know. Seti T $7.77. Jordan, as a band we are all super stoked that the OG 209 boys are back. We are friends with Nick Miller and are super happy for you guys. Hell yeah, so Sedit actually yeah. records with Nick. Uh, that's their producer. Oh, sweet. Hell yeah. Well, hell yeah. I have a I have a couple questions for you. Thank you, thank you, Jeff. By the way, uh, I want to play one of Jeff's songs yeah. for you a little bit later, Jordan. But uh, I have a couple of little bit tough questions I have to ask. 
Um, eventually, someone I think will ask you this, so we're going to ask you first. At some point, do you ever anticipate doing any of Jag's material in your guys' set? Um, we weren't asked to do it. We were strictly, you know, the offer was to get to come out and play the EP. And that's what um, we, that's what we want. That's what we want to hear. But I just got to ask it. Yeah, no, it uh, it had the question hasn't really been brought up. I don't think we've even discussed it. I mean, uh, the the first idea I had when he was still in the band and things were getting towards the end of them and they weren't writing anymore is I wanted to, you know, do the dual thing. Like, I was going to come on, do screams, let him do sings, and make everybody happy. I mean, that's all I want to do. Like, that's, I thought it would have been a beautiful fucking thing. And, you know, you don't see bands ever get to that point with replacements and originals. And I just thought it would have been a cool thing to do. It never, probably is never a possibility. But, I mean, I've always been down for any opportunity to just, you know, play the songs again and just I mean I gave up on it for a really long time until the emo night thing came around and then just getting the request to host the night and sing along to the songs it was just like holy shit like who who at an emo night's gonna even know those songs exist and all the promoters were like I was I was asked to bring you to the show like if there's gonna be people there and it's crazy I didn't even know we were like considered an emo band i thought we were post hardcore but you know it's all it's all genre games <laughs> i don't think it and you did you did a lot of those with the uh, so. with with kurt and i know that we we've we've talked with kurt before and when we had you on but uh if if over the years from from touring and all the music connections you've made from the multiple projects you've done do you anticipate any form of features whatsoever possibly on on this part two ep that could or could not come out or is it just gonna be strictly just you guys and part two question is Corey and brian back doing backup vocals or they're gonna let you take the helm on everything oh no i couldn't do it without brian um we only had two mics at practice so we didn't get Corey on there but we were doing karaoke, drinking after the set, and Corey's pipes sound pretty good. So, cool. We'll definitely, I'm going to make them <laughs> do their parts. For sure. Oh, yeah. It adds a different element. And, uh, you know, uh, so there's parts on, the, on the, the recordings that have three part harmonies. You know, there's three of me, and we got a, I think we got a lot of, Back back then, I think people are more uh, understanding of what a live performance is and what an album is. But um, when they sing with me, it fills it out and it sounds a lot more like the EP than even if I sing perfect. If there's just one of me, it doesn't sound as epic. So <laughs> it's definitely necessary to have Brian and Corey back in the band, which I mean, they're they're both busy uh brian just had a kid i think it's like four months old or something yeah that's awesome so that's brian. to have them back is pretty cool everyone's making a huge sacrifice very cool uh jordan we'll, we we do want to ask you a couple more questions but are you down to review a couple bands with us real quick of course hell yeah I don't think you answered my initial first question, by the way, which was, uh, do you anticipate any features on any of the new material? Not necessarily from Brian or Corey, but just from connections that you guys have made. Like maybe a Kurt gets on, she watched part two, or maybe uh, a so-and-so. Is there any been any discussions of that, or that is kind of down the road talks? Well, when I was initially writing the which the album that ended up being wires in the concept of breathing. I had it, I had a different name for it, but it was the concept uh, that was started with. She watched the sky. It was like a continuation. And um, my whole idea since the beginning is when I had, if we were to do features, I wanted them to be characters in my story. And so like, if, 
there was a feature, you would know that this is supposed to be so-and-so, whatever the character's name would be. And I would like to feature them throughout the process of writing the albums, you know, bring them back, like have like a, not just a one-off, but kind of have, kind of like my nemesis i want like the feature to be like my either my enemy or the female that i you know i'm I'm writing about i would like to have a girl sing her parts and stuff so i have ideas and just would just have to find the people that'd be willing to do it is there i mean i'd love i'd love to have kurt be a part of it i mean i've told you before kurt's uh Kurt's first band was a big inspiration to everybody, and Kurt's always been a has always been someone I looked up to. Just not just his ability to sing and his talent, but just him as a person. He's, yeah, he's, he's a really sweet guy. fucking humble. He's cool, and he's always been he's always been somebody that I like sought to be after. If there was anybody else in the scene, like anyone in the scene that I admired or looked up to, and you know, would follow in the footsteps of it would be Kurt. Hell yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and play uh, a track that somebody wants us to, uh, to play for you, which is the band Said It. Now, was uh, which one of which one of the boys would you say was the most rusty at practice the other day? Not to <laughs> not to talk trash anyway, but who are you just like, man, Corey? That fill was just some bullshit. What happened? <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Um. Damn. Good question. I was. Either we were all really rusty, or <laughs> we all did pretty good. I don't. I'm trying to think. I don't think we had to stop the songs once we played through them all completely, start to finish, the first try. Um. The loudness was like was. Uh, you know, kind of overwhelming for me. I hadn't really been in a band room in a really long time, and I was really trying to focus on singing. And uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I guess I'd have to say. Hmm. Probably Corey, because then. Well, damn. Damn, son. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. He'll, 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 he probably had it together by the second or third uh, run through the set, I'm sure. But uh, that's funny. Uh, you no, know, that dude hasn't. He hasn't had a drum kit set up in God knows how long. Um, did he bring the? Did he bring the backpack to practice? Did he play with the backpack on? No, he, <laughs> he retired the backpack. It's on. It's up on the wall somewhere. For sure. <laughs> no backpack, but I, I'm sure I'm sure he'll bring it back for the shows. Hell yeah. Shout out to Corey. Um you once told me a story about how Nightmare was gonna be played for like a talent show or something, but then you there was it was like not ready to be played and you guys just winged it and won the whole talent show. Can you can you talk about it was, that? It was a battle of the bands. It's so, yeah, I remember something like that. Can you t- can you talk about that story? Because that to me is my favorite track. And I just think it's such a cool story how it just kind of came and put itself together like right at the exact time. Yeah, that was when I I decided that I wanted to write a concept. I wanted to create characters and kind of build like a whole world type of thing within my head. Um, I played a lot of soul caliber back then uh, hell yeah huge huge part of my uh you know my alone time was spent it was either practice or soul caliber and um i think that i didn't want to write another song that i had already written like i didn't want to use the same words vocabulary and stuff and I've always thought the cut scenes on Soul Calibur and the battle cries and shit are just so epic that um, I think that's what really influenced it. And I hadn't had a chance to fully explain that to the band to where they could understand. They were just kind of like, you ran out of lyrics. 
you're that... <laughs> you know you're just writing about things that are already written and i was like no 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 it's not that i have this idea so i didn't want to sing it at practice we got in a huge fucking fight um because the battle of the bands was the next day and uh, i went home and freaked the fuck out because they made it made me more aware that yeah it is tomorrow and i knew that if we if we didn't play it we probably weren't gonna win because we had played the other songs um at the battle of the bands the year before and um didn't win so i knew that we weren't gonna just magically win with the same tracks and uh then we had an intro to it and it just added a lot of um a lot of energy it was like a step up in tempo from like our other stuff and i just told them to trust me and i don't even know if i really trusted myself i just knew that once i got up there and saw all of our friends in the crowd and the hardcore dancers and you know all the chicks that we liked and i just i pulled it together pretty fast and i remember everyone kind of mean mugging as it started and then it started and I started singing, and everyone kind of looked at each other like, oh, wow, he actually did it. <laughs> <laughs> That's and, awesome. Uh, I remember that was the first time that I actually made them trust me. And I think that from then on out, it was, you know, if I wasn't fully prepared for something, they would know that I would do what I had to do in the amount of time that I had. I love doing that. I don't know why. I don't like having too much time to... Like, I love being a studio artist. I love not having time to sit on my lyrics. I like to just wing it. Like, it just, it comes more naturally. And because you could write an idea and get stuck on it because you practice it so much and it not be to the full potential that it could have been. And that one, I had no, you know, I didn't listen to anything. I started listening to a lot of dance music at the time and a lot of like album leaf and Mew and just like weird shit. They didn't really have singers that were anything like myself. And I think that helped like, cause I didn't have anything to base it off of. I didn't know my range yet. And yeah, if we ended up uh, winning the battle of the bands, uh, going up against, uh, hey, dance I'm Gap here. Band, who was hey. another local Hi. band. I'm sorry. Continue. Oh yeah. You, so you what? You had to go up against your buddy, your buddies in Dance Gavin. Yeah. Which mm. we were already pretty sold that we weren't gonna win, but we had to try it anyways because if we needed to win that battle of the bands for the money to get to North Carolina, because the label said if you could get out here, we'll record your your tracks for free. And fuck yeah. You know, driving from L.A. or from Sacramento to to Raleigh, North Carolina, it's a pretty long drive, pretty pricey. So with hotels and, you know, feeding seven dudes because we the six of us and the driver, um, we needed that cash. And I don't think our parents were ready to make that type of commitment yet because it was all about the time we needed to get real jobs and go to college or whatever it was it, i think it was becoming we we're getting and we're becoming too old to to be full-time local band guys like we needed to step it up a level and right I've, parents parents need to those, parents need to see proof yeah and i think that you know winning the money was like all right well you guys can go for the tracks and we were still stupid young before when we got back. I know that I wasn't even 21 yet. So everyone else must have been 18, 17, 18, and then uh, 20. Jordan, I want to so, ask one or two more if that's cool. Um, how far in advance have you guys booked shows? I know you have the festival coming up. I saw a buddy tag me and say that you're playing a show in New York and they're opening. I have not seen anything posted about that one though. How far in advance has Skylit been booked? Like, are, are you guys booked like 20, 30 shows already for 2022? They're just not announced yet. Um, is there like a tour that you can't talk about that maybe is in the works? Like, what can you talk about as far as playing out uh, for the rest of the year? 
Um, I do know that there are other shows. Um, there's a decent amount. Um, that we're hitting all the cities that that we love to play. Um, pick we picked a lot of our favorites because we can't full time do it, but we're gonna be cramming in as much as we can um, for as long as we can. And uh, I know that it's probably going to end up leaking because obviously the promoters have to get locals and whatnot. But we, you know, I think we've all decided as a band, we're letting the promoters uh, announce the shows. Okay. So they could be the ones that do it. Um, I don't know if we're going to actually ever just go ahead and throw them all out there. I think we're just going to announce them as a, as it goes, as it comes. I know that it's starting, the shows are starting in May. Um, we got shows in July. We got shows in October. Um, is there, is there yeah, going to be, is there going to be a hometown show? Oh yeah. Cool. Yep. The date is confirmed, but I will wait on that. To see see what i actually didn't ask the guys if i could say about talk about that or not but it's cool we'll, um, let, we'll let the promoters announce it when it's time i i totally understand yeah i mean i mean all of the shows that we got the promoters uh approached us and so i think that they're excited and just as excited as we are and we're being selective with where we're playing and stuff just based off how much time we have and i don't know i think that I think we're eventually going to hit every... We're going to get everywhere. We're not going to leave anybody out. It's just a, a matter of uh, how things go, you know, as, as far as everything. Like, I'm ready to go every single day for the rest of my life, but... Fuck yeah. Hell you yeah. know, I, I, I don't... There's something I feel when I'm on stage that I don't feel anywhere else. And I mean, I've partied. I've done drugs. And there ain't nothing like it. Like, it's 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 a sort of even playing just for the boys and their girlfriends that were in there. It was like you get this feeling of I don't know. And I thought I, I think I know now when I saw those old bands playing at the bar and shit when they were like in their forties and fifties and they were rocking out, having a kick ass time, playing their corny ass music. Like I, I get where they were at now. Like it's just you get to step out of the step out of the norm, you know. You take your suit and tie off, and kick your shoes off, and drink some beers. It's uh it's it's gonna be probably the best year of my life. I hope it turns into more than that, but I'm just hoping for the. I'm hoping that the rest of this year goes as planned. Like I said earlier, like this is my this is my vice as of the commitment that I've made to the band and to myself and to my family and to the fans, the people that have supported us. Like, you know, I don't have fans that support me when I'm fucked up. Like when I start ranting on my Twitter and doing all that dumb shit, like no one replies. Like to the point where I almost thought my, you know, everything was dead. But then I post Skylet Drive shit and it gets up to a thousand likes in eight hours. Like, so I know it was just, and I'm appreciative of that. I, I, I Sometimes I get kind of mad. Like, oh, you know, fuck you guys. You don't support me. But it's like, I think they just want to see the best for me. And that that makes me, you know, it makes me feel good. You know, that's all I ever wanted. Like, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do when this music shit's done. I really don't. It's not It's not done. You got plenty of time, brother. And we're, we're so excited to... to... Have the, the OG lineup back together. The boys are back, ladies and gentlemen. The boys are back in town. Hell Dude, yeah. my last question for you. Uh, you said the, the EP totals at 17 minutes. Is there any chance that possibly, and I don't recall the name of it. I want to say it's like a number, but there was a demo for She Watches Sky that, that's titled with a number. Uh, two, 238. 238. That's a... Is, is there any chance 238 or any of those are worked into the set? Um, I don't know. We haven't really talked about that. Uh, that song, 
wasn't chosen for the EP, and then we kind of just didn't listen to it after, or we didn't talk about it after that. Cool. Just throwing it out there, seeing what's up. But uh, Jordan, we know you're a busy man. I'm sure your phone has been the most insane it's been in a long time. Thank you so much for for stopping in and doing this, sir. Yep, and I just I just killed my friend's battery in his car. He's gonna <laughs> kick my ass. All right. <laughs> we'll we'll let you go, brother. But uh, cheers. Be safe. And, and when you hit Southern California, please let me know so I can uh, round up a whole bunch of people, get them out to the show, and support you guys. But much success in 2022. We're so excited. You guys are back together. And uh, cheers, man. Always a pleasure having you on. Ladies and gentlemen, Jordan Blake of the Reunited Skyline Drive! Yeah, hell yeah! Love you, dude. Cheers. Much success. Hell yeah, brother. Cheers, Jordan. Thank you for, uh, thank you, for uh, you know, always bringing me on the show and giving me a chance to to talk and, you know, put content out to people that didn't know the story, the truth, or whatever, you know, it's, you've given me a platform to share myself, and it, it's, it's very rewarding. I That's why I've made sure all the band members will come on at some point here soon. Fucking Thank you'll you. Get, you'll get all of them, and then hopefully you'll get all of us at the same time when we're back together here really, like, next month, I think. Cool. I appreciate that. Uh, always a pleasure having you on. We have Joey on tomorrow, which would leave only Corey. So maybe if there's any way we could squeeze Corey in also with Joey tomorrow, that'd be fantastic. We'd love to talk to them also. Continue the hype about the original lineup back together. If you could, Jordan, please plug all the new links that you guys have put up uh, for where everybody can follow the, the, the new pages and stuff. Okay. I think, uh, I think the Twitter is original uh under thing asd and then i think it's at I, she watched the sky on instagram i know it's that on and instagram then, and then facebook is also it's either asd original or original asd um youtube is the same and i think that's that's it right We'll find it and put, we'll put it in the chat just in case to make sure everyone people uh, it is original ASD on Facebook. We'll make we'll put it in the chat to make sure everyone knows and they can hit the like and follow and keep up with you guys. But Jordan, again, sir, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your cool, evening. Cool. And can I say one? Absolutely, say one absolutely. Thing before I go, um, I never have actually taken the time to address this, but I really wanted to say thank you to the fans and to Jag for, you know, keeping the band alive over all these years and the, the putting in all his dedication and the fans for not turning their backs and supporting them throughout all the albums. Like that's really cool. Like it, it's great to be back and to be able to play with my band, but it wouldn't have happened if he wouldn't have joined and they wouldn't have supported. So I've, I've been wanting to say that for a while. It's a, it's a you know it's a sensitive subject, but I'm I'm grateful for everybody that helped out with keeping the band alive. Very cool of you. Shout out to Jag, and uh, I'm glad there's no there's no hard tension uh, regarding that subject. But very cool, sir. We're so excited, man, for real. Uh, I will not be able to make the first show at the So What Festival. I believe it's called the So What Festival, but I'm sure we South will. South by So What. South by So What. I keep saying it wrong. From uh, Mike Mike Zemer. Mike Zemer, I believe, runs and sets all that up. Yeah, but, uh, shout out Mike Zemer. Mike Zemer. Shout out Mike Zemer. Um, but yeah, dude, I'm sure we'll we'll hear from the fans that it was absolutely fantastic. We're excited. But Jordan... We got a Hollywood show. We do. Yeah, it's got to be the whiskey. Tell me it's the whiskey at Go-Go. Oh, you can't, I know you can't say I have say. no idea. We'll find out. I have no idea. We'll find out. I'll be there. We'll kick it. I'll bring some joints for you guys. Uh, Alrighty. <laughs> love you, Jordan. Cheers, brother. And uh, much success too. in 2022. Be safe. Ladies and gentlemen, Jordan Blake of Scout and Drive! Hell yeah! Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Nice you, brother. And you as well, sir. Be safe. Cheers.